Now, I don't know about you and Leroy, but Pinnell made me kill him. Pinnell called me champ. Now, I told him my name was King. He say, yeah, champ. <sighs> now, I go on. I don't say nothing. I told myself, he don't know. He don't know my daddy killed another man for calling him out his name. He don't know. He fucking with King Henry the second. I got the atomic bomb for all he's concerned. I gotta use it. He said, God looks out the fools and drunks. Now, I used to think that was true. But seeing how he was both, I, I don't know anymore. He called me champ. And I ain't say nothing. I told myself, he, he don't know. But I'm gonna give him a chance to find out. Yeah. If he finds out, he'll come back and tell me he's sorry. I'll let him live. Or I'm gonna fuck him up. I'm gonna bust both his kneecaps. But I'll let him live. Saturday. Now, I don't know why it's always on a Saturday. Saturday, I went up to buy me some potatoes. I say, I want me some mashed potatoes. I told Nisi, I said, you buy the milk and the butter and I'll get the potatoes. Now, I went straight up there on Hester. I went straight up there and I brought me 10 pounds of potatoes. Now, I started about 20, but they only had one bag and that was 12. The bag was tore, and I didn't want them to spill on my way home. Now, if I was carrying 20 pounds of potatoes, maybe I would have went home a short way. I say, let me head up there on center to see if I see Chuck. He owes me $20, and if he paid me, maybe that'll bring me some luck. Now, I get halfway down. And I seen Pennell. And I told myself, I ain't gonna be nobody's champ today. And I fixed that hard in my head. And I tried to walk by. I didn't want to ignore him. So I say, how you doing, Pennell? I don't really care how he doing. I'm just being polite like my mama Louise taught me. No sooner than those words got out of my mouth than I felt something hot against my face. A hot flash and something warm and wet. This nigga didn't cut me. He hit me with that razor and I froze. I didn't know what had happened. It seemed as though somebody turned on a light and everything stood still. And I could see him smile. Then he ran. Now, I don't know which way he ran. I was still blinded by that light. It took the doctor 112 stitches and four hours to sew it up. I figured this scar got to mean something. I can't take it all. It's part of me now. I figure it got to mean something. As long as Pennell is walking around, <laughs> it ain't nothing but a scar. I had to give it me. And what?
wasn't but two weeks later. And I'm just thinking about this thing. I'm thinking about what it's going to mean to everybody. I thought about his mama. And I thought the whole thing out. It ain't easy taking somebody else's life. I told myself, it's me or him. Now, even though I knew that was a lie, I saw his funeral. I heard the preacher. I saw the undertaker. I saw the grave diggers. I saw his flowers. Then I seen his woman. That was the hardest part. I mean, she knows him better than anybody. She knows what makes him breathe. She knows what he sounds like when he wakes up in the morning. She knows when, the, when, when he's hungry. And what a satisfier. I mean, she knows everything what nobody else don't know. It was hard, but I told myself, she got to suffer. She got to play the widow. She got to cry the tears. It was two weeks later. And I seen Pinnell going into Irv's bar. He went straight to the back, to the phone booth. Now I don't know who he was calling, but that was the last call he made. I saw my scar in the window of the phone booth. Tapped on the glass. He turns and looks and froze right there. The first bullet hit him in the mouth. Now I don't know where the other 13 went. The only regret is I didn't get away. I didn't get away with murder that time. You always regret the one you don't get away with. Cost me seven years of my life. That's all right. I done got smarter. The next one, oh, it's gonna be a self-defense. The next one ain't gonna cause me nothing.